consolidations, <coughs> comprehensive consolidations problem part five, where we left off last time on part four, we were talking about the consolidated balance sheet. So I'm going to slide over to that document. So here is ACME, our parent, XYZ, our sub. We had started to talk through the explanations of the elimination entries here in the middle of the page. And where I left off was on note six, which dealt with how the elimination entry for land. So the unamortized fair value differential for land at twelve thirty one thirteen is fifty two thousand dollars. Again, that links back to on the general info tab when we did our amortization tables down here. You can see that for land we have an unamortized balance of fifty two thousand dollars. That is what ends up on the balance sheet here, and that is linked up here. And then long-term investment. You'll note on every consolidation that one of the things that gets eliminated in consolidation is the investment that the parent, ACME in this case, made in the sub XYZ. So there's that $3,237,000. And you can see it says note 7 here. Let's see how that ended up. That amount represents the historical cost of the subsidiary the investment in the sub XYZ, it's the amount that ACME paid for 80% of XYZ as an investment. So if I again go back to the general info page and I go up to the top, the beginning of our discussion on part one, there is the amount here that ACME paid for XYZ, the actual check that they wrote. And where that ends up is, that is a, an elimination entry in the balance sheet so that that investment account gets eliminated. A good thing to remember is in consolidation for the most part, there should be the only amount in investment, and there isn't any balance in investment, is the parent's investment in companies other than the sub or in assets other than the sub, but the investment in the sub gets eliminated. Goodwill, this represents the amortized or the impaired goodwill balance. If I slide down to note eight, Remember, you'll remember that Goodwill, when we go to that general info page, was impaired and that the new value was $650,000. That was dealt with over here. If I go down to the Goodwill impairment, there's the $650,000 of Goodwill that was impaired. Going back to the balance sheet, <coughs> excuse me, there's the $650,000, and we see how that gets posted as a new asset. Goodwill, new asset in consolidation. As far as liabilities and equity, the dividends payable we already covered, that gets eliminated. That's 40% of the dividend XYZ paid. I'm sorry, the 80% that was due to Acme, the parent dividend. Bond payable, slide to the bottom of the page to note nine. The unamortized fair value differential for the bond is the 25,180. So there's that one. And then the last item is the retained earnings. And you'll see that that retained earnings ties to the last template we're going to talk about, which is the roll forward of consolidated net income. And you'll notice also that total assets equal total liabilities plus equity. Going to the roll forward of the income statement and retained earnings. So here's our consolidated balance. Now you'll notice that what happens is, is that sales revenue note one, we are removing the total value, sale price value, sale price times number of units of intercompany transactions. So if I slide down to note one, the sale price of the intercompany transactions is 580 and that reduces revenue. That's an elimination entry. We look at cost of sales note two, we see that we eliminate the dollar amount of the sale. And in addition, we remove the intercompany items, the intercompany gross profits here and here. 
There's an unlocated difference in this problem of $1,800 that I couldn't locate for the student. So I wanted to put that in to let you know that this $1,800 number does not tie to anything in the spreadsheets. So you see the opening inventory uh, reduces cost because that's revenue that we count. And since it's revenue that we count, it goes to reduce cost of sales, which is why this number is negative. The gross profit and ending inventory gets added to cost of sales. That increases the expense. So 58900 is our elimination entry. And you can see that since cost of sales is negative numbers, we are eliminating by posting a positive number. So both sales revenue and total has gone down and cost of sales have gone down to come up with a new gross margin, sales less cost of sales. Selling general and admin, note three, there were a couple of things that were posted there. The amortization of the fair market differential of the building and the equipment for the current year and the amortization of the unrealized gain on sale, the $2,000 for the first six months of the year, the amortization of that amount adds up to $7,050. And that is grouped together in selling general and admin. Other income and expense on note four, fair value differential of the land, the entire unrealized gain on the equipment, the intercompany dividend, this is 80% of a $90,000 dividend. If I go back to the balance sheet, I'm going to pull that number out of a different balance sheet number. Bear with me here because I want to make sure you, should, you can see how that's linked. So if you look at, here's the 12, 31, 13 balance sheet, XYZ the sub. They've declared a dividend of $90,000. 80% of that $90,000 or $72,000 is what ACME is due so that we don't want to count that dividend as income. We want to eliminate it. And finally, here's the current fair market value differential, the current amortization for the bond. It adds up to 131,820. And there's that elimination entry. We post the entire goodwill impairment loss. We went through goodwill impairment earlier, which brings us down to net income before taxes. Handling the new revenue numbers, new cost of sales, et cetera. Income taxes stays the same. It's the sum of the income taxes for this parent in blue and the sub in green. And we can then use that to calculate consolidated net income. Net income before tax is blue. Income tax is green. We get consolidated net income of 645,130. 20% of that goes to the NCI non-controlling interest, 80% to the parent. And then we do a little consolidation recap. Opening retained earnings, that seven million five is on the consolidated retained earnings tab. Which is right here, there's our consolidated retained earnings in blue. That's our starting point, 1231-2012. We add in the consolidated net income from the parent, which links to the number we just calculated in blue. The dividend declared by ACME the parent, not the sub, but by ACME the parent, which is also on that consolidated retained earnings tab. Right here, I go up to the top, go to the balance sheet. There's the dividend declared during 2013 by ACME the parent, 200,000. And this reconciliation gets me the ending retained earnings in consolidation, 7934,624, which is the retained earnings number that gets in the consolidated balance as retained earnings. and you have the notes below it. So what we've done is we've done the consolidated income statement and retained earnings. 
and we've now done the entire spreadsheet. I want to point out here at the end that on stltest.net we have our video accounting textbooks. If you go to the site and click on the left, there's a page. At this point, we have two video textbooks, Accounting for Investments Advanced Accounting, which includes this information. You get the full-length movie version video itself, the Excel templates that were used to create the video, just as you've seen here, a practice exam, and then practice exam answers also in the video. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.